The Birmingham Business Hall of Fame seeks to recognize business leaders who have dreamed big and made those dreams come alive. And tonight, we honor the 2019 class of inductees. We are proud to add tonight's honorees to the ranks of over 110 Birmingham business leaders who have made Birmingham a better place. Thank you all for your contributions to our great city. I also want to take this moment to thank Kiwanis members Lee Davis and Terry Smiley, who co-chaired the Hall of Fame Committee, who puts on this event each year, and all of their committee members, as well as Kiwanis staff, Gail Vaughn, Darcy Plowden, and Janet Bird. Great job, team. It is so nice to see a full house of beautiful faces. <laughs> Welcome again to the 2019 Birmingham Business Hall of Fame. I hope that you're enjoying your meal and this time with one another. We have an awesome group of individuals we want to recognize today. Before we begin our ceremony, I want to thank the Birmingham Business Hall of Fame Committee for their hard work tonight to make this event possible. And special thanks to Ty West and Jason Malloy for creating and producing tonight's honoree videos. Hey, good evening, everyone. I'm Terry Smiley. And as Scott mentioned, the Birmingham Business Hall of Fame boasts over 110 esteemed honorees. We are honored to have several of them with us tonight. Uh, we would like to recognize these past honorees. So as I call your name, Please stand and be recognized. Tonight, we have Mr. Tim Stevens. Mr. 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 as I uh, finish the list, if you don't mind. Dr. Darrell Pro, Mr. Tim Waitzman, Ms. Susan Matlock, Mr. Michael Calvert, Mr. Don Logan, Mr. Hatton Smith, Mr. Drayton Neighbors, Mr. Lee Steisinger Jr., and Mr. Richard Anthony. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> and I must recognize Ms. Carolyn uh, Featheringill, who is the wife of William Featheringill, who is class uh, 2017. And she's also a member of the Birmingham Business Hall of Fame Committee. So Carolyn, would you please stand and be recognized as well? We would also be remiss if we did not take a moment of silence in memory of 2002 honoree and fellow of one, Frank Bromberg Jr., who passed away this June. Let's take a moment of silence. Thank you. Now, let's begin our induction ceremony. Lee? John McMahon. John McMahon is currently the chairman of Ligon Industries. He is undeniably a heavyweight in the Alabama business circles, having been involved in more than 35 acquisitions, ranging from publicly held companies to sm small privately held companies. He serves as the director of Protective Life, Pro Assurance, National Bank of Commerce, Cooper T. Smith Corporation, and UAB Health Systems, and on the board of trustees for the University of Alabama and Birmingham Southern College. Instrumental in the creation of the Birmingham Airport Authority and the organization of the UAB Health System, Mr. McMahon has worked to improve the quality of life for all in Alabama. John McMahon, Ligon Industries. In recent Birmingham history, Few individuals have had the same level of impact on the economy as John McMahon. His contributions to the Magic City's business world span a range of industries, from manufacturing and banking to healthcare, education, and beyond, putting McMahon at the epicenter of Birmingham's economic evolution. He is a person of exceptional judgment. He's a person uh, that's devoted to his family. He's a person devoted to his friends. 
and he's a person devoted to this community in general and the city of Birmingham in particular. People would be so surprised how many things John and Betty McMahon do to help other people that you don't know about. Colleagues say McMahon, a Birmingham native who grew up in Ensley, has been a quiet yet powerful force in some of the most important developments in the Magic City's economy over the past four decades. He has always been very connected to the city of Birmingham and this community and has demonstrated that in countless ways over the years, in ways many people don't even know about. John is a quiet leader. You know, he, he's not involved in things where he's looking for publicity or recognition or, you know, something to put on his resume. I wouldn't want someone to mistake the term quiet force uh, for indifference because he was far from indifferent about almost anything. He cared deeply about what he cared about. Uh, and if you had John on your side, it meant a great deal toward the eventual success of whatever it was you were attempting to do. It's much like John's friendship. You might have a lot of friends, but if John is your friend, you only need one friend. Before becoming a titan in the industrial world, McMahon started his career in the legal field, where he quickly distinguished himself. Uh, he handled, uh, for his age particularly, some very major matters. There was one large antitrust case here that involved the pipe industry, and that's how he got in the knowledge of McWayne. While working as an attorney, he caught the attention of McWayne, Inc. He had been doing a lot of legal work for McWayne, cast iron pipe manufacturer here, and uh, Jim McWayne, the owner, uh, recognized John's talents and uh, drive and convinced him to leave the firm and go full-time with the, the uh, company. And that was rare then. He was a longtime executive at McWayne, which he helped grow to become one of the largest companies in Alabama and a global leader in its industry. They built it into one heck of a company and uh, still is today. His accomplishments at McWayne alone would have made a great career for many. But McMahon wasn't through. After leaving McWayne, McMahon built Ligon Industries into a giant. Lee Nolan, his partner in Ligon, they had been together at McWayne. Lee was an engineer, and uh, they had learned how to put a company back together that might be in financial trouble or the market might be in trouble, and they could recognize it from their experience, and they were a great team. Uh, and trying to organize, reorganize, step in and help a company stay afloat. And uh, they built a, another very strong member of the Birmingham business community. Colleagues say McMahon's business acumen shined in his experience in direct equity investing. Since 1976, he has been involved in dozens of acquisitions, ranging from publicly held companies to small private business. McMahon's accomplishments transcend his roles at both McWayne and Ligon. And if you look at his batting average at McWayne and Ligon, he may not have been batting a thousand, but he sure reached Hall of Fame levels. He played pivotal roles at the original National Bank of Commerce, the Birmingham Airport Authority, and UAB Health System, where he served as the first chairman of the board. For example, he was on our board at Pro Assurance for nearly 20 years. And during that 20 years, we made about 20 different acquisitions. John was very engaged in each one of those. And John's judgment was such that no one on the Pro Assurance Board would have been willing to go forward with a deal that John had some question about. He cared about Birmingham a lot. And he looked at opportunities to participate and to give us time and effort. UAB is a good example, uh, the university system, uh, the airport authority was an important creature and he was really very much involved in getting that established. We'll tell you, from Dr. Watts to Dr. Fernani to Dr. Vickers, that they would not be where they are today but for John McMahon. And his keen business sense is a reason he is regularly called upon to serve on a litany of boards for corporations and nonprofits. He has good judgment about people, he has good judgment about human nature, he has good financial judgment, 
and John can be trusted. And that trust is something that carried forward in any business that he was involved in. McMahon is a graduate of both Birmingham Southern College and the University of Alabama School of Law, and education has been a hallmark of his career. He has served on the boards of trustees for both Birmingham Southern and the University of Alabama system. Because he knew that education was the answer, whatever the problem was. Education is the reason and the means by which we will overcome the challenges we face. John recognized that intuitively and all that he did was directed toward that. And for example, many people don't know that John paid the college tuition for any number of people that he had no relationship with, but he stepped forward to enable them to have a chance. Uh, we'll never be able to repay John all that we owe him. And I don't know anyone I'd rather have than John McMahon helping me make an intelligent decision and once he's got the facts and knows the information investigated it. So I think that's his legacy, the universities and education. Ultimately, his contemporaries say McMahon had unparalleled drive, determination, and the talent to shape Birmingham for the better. And he encouraged a lot of other people. You know, he would reach out to younger people coming along that you could tell had a lot of potential and he, they would go to him for advice and he would try to direct them in the right way. But uh, one thing I've always admired is when he takes something on, he does it uh, for the right reason, but he then follows through. He has done things so quietly and without any desire to have any credit for anything. So most people will never recognize all that John has done. But the great thing about John is he doesn't care. And whatever the setting, whatever the business enterprise, whatever the question, you could rely on John to get things right. Thank you very much. It's a, uh, obviously a great and exceptional honor to be here. Uh, I thank Lee and all the members of the club for a special uh, opportunity to be here. Uh, as I look out over the group, uh, I see so many faces and so many people that have meant so much for me for so many years. I would like to stop and thank each of you individually, <laughs> but Lee tells me she has a hook behind it. Not hesitant to bring out if I speak too long. Uh, anyway, I, I particularly want to thank uh, Edgar and Boots and Stan for being in this video. Uh, I have said often, we'll say tonight, that uh, at this point in my life, it is great to have friends whose imagination is better than their memory. They've <laughs> <laughs> certainly proven uh, in that video. Several years ago, uh, I had associates and employees gave me a cartoon uh, and it had a picture of an old man like me sitting behind a desk talking to a young man and the caption said, Son, it took a lot of hard work to get me where I am today. Fortunately, I didn't have to do any of it. <laughs> and uh, well, I hope that is not true. I do know that whatever success that I have had is because I've had the opportunity and the privilege to work for and with extraordinary people. Starting with Jim McWayne, uh, who taught me the fundamentals of business, what it took to have a good company, but more importantly, he taught me by example how to treat people. I have not always lived up to his standard, but I've always tried. Uh, secondly, uh, a very important part in my life, who sadly cannot be with us tonight because he passed away about a year ago, is my longtime partner, Lee Nolan. We were business associates for 40 years, and in reality, as that cartoon would suggest, uh, Lee really did all the hard work and I got most of the recognition and glory for it. Uh, secondly, uh, 
my associates at Living uh, who work hard every day uh, to make us a good company, who are with us tonight, uh, Jim Delk, John Wetzel, uh, Jan Elhardt, and Justin Mayfield, uh, and my real estate partner, Lee Sanders, who's hanging out in the back of the room. Uh, anyway, they, they make my life easier and uh, are good for my grandchildren's network. Uh, finally, and most importantly, uh, family. You can't say enough about family. Starting with my wife, although she does not look like it, and she was not a child bride. My wife of 55 years, uh, they, uh, who has been a rock, a stabilizing force, uh, through good times and the few bad times that we've had. Uh, secondly, my children, Jamie, Joel, and David, who are all successful and adjusted. Uh, my extraordinarily beautiful daughters in laws, Carrie and Ashley. I hate to call them my daughters in laws because I really think of them as my children. And finally, my grandchildren who are all conquering the world, except for Brian, who is here tonight, who may be my only heir after tonight. So. <laughs> so, anyway, thank you very much. And, uh, uh, I'll conclude by saying that uh, I, I thought seriously about asking my very close friend, Charles McCreary, to be in this video, but I was afraid he would tell the truth. <laughs> I didn't know him. Thank you very much.